Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 45 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, where I'm missing slime as usual. That's okay, I've got a problem, solution for that. Uh, last episode we started playing with Pneumatocraft. Super fun mod. Very big fan of the Pneumatocraftiness, uh, and all about it, right? Super, super excited to be playing more. <gasps> slime for days, until we run out of, until we run out of mana. Uh, hey, how about some coal, would you? That'll do. That'll do. So now everybody's happy? Cool. Let's make ourselves a crafter, an iron crafter, please. So, last episode we started playing with this. Um, what I want to do today is a lot. So, uh, we have a lot of things to make. To progress through the mod, there's a few things we're going to need. One of the first major hurdles of getting through the mod is making the printed circuit board. Now, this is a regular crafting table recipe using an unassembled PCB with transistors and capacitors. Transistors are made in the pressure chamber. Capacitors are made in the pressure chamber. Cool? Easy peasy. Unassembled PCBs, however, require a little bit of work. They can either be made quickly and easily using the assembly control multi-block system, which we'll look at. However, all of these machines require printed circuit boards. So in order to get these, which we do need to get in order to get towards our spawner setup that we want to do, um, we need to start making PCBs the slow and less optimal way. So in order for that to happen, we're going to need to get an etching tank with some etching acid in it, and that will allow us to etch empty PCBs. Empty PCBs, however, need to run through a UV light box first in order to uh, give them a better chance of being etched. So long story short, um, we need to create several things, right? First, we have to set up making the empty PCBs, which are made in a pressure chamber. Cool. Then from there, we need to etch them in a UV light box and then put them in an etching tank with some etching acid to make unassembled PCBs, which we can then craft into printed circuit boards. Got it? Good. Because a lot of steps. Uh, however, in order to make the UV light box work, we also need a PCB blueprint, which uh, is either tradable with a pneumatocraft mechanic, and we've seen some of these guys in villages. So I might pop out real quick to see if they can be found. However, the other thing we can do is uh, do some Amazon tablet trading, uh, and that might be a cool thing to do because there's some uh, other stuff we might want to get as well. Uh, so that's Amazon, uh, and you need Amazon tasks. So we need to do an Amazon anyway in order to get some stuff in the future. So maybe we should look at making ourselves an Amadron tablet as well. Uh, and in order for us to do that, um, we're gonna need to charge it with pressure. Uh, so for that, we're gonna need a, the, the GPS tool and the air canisters, right? And some plastic sheets. Oh boy, we have to get into plastic now. Uh, plastic is made. Heat frame cooling makes plastic sheets with plastic. Uh, so we're going to need some molten plastic, uh, and that is the thermal pneumatic processing plant uh, with biodiesel uh, or LPG. We'll make molten plastic using coal or charcoal. Cool? So, questions? <laughs> There's a lot of things we got to do. Uh, but also, this will be nice. I think, I think I'm going to go the biodiesel route uh, because I also want biodiesel for making some other things so that I can get speed upgrades, which will also be useful for us. So I think we're going to do the biodiesel route, right? So that'll be cool. So long story short, we have a lot of things to make. So let's get started. All right. So I think one of the things we're going to want to do is uh, come over here and set up refined storage automation. Uh, I think that would be cool. So we're going to want a refined, uh, or we're going to want an iron crafter here. And what I'm thinking is we set this up with a chest. Does that sound like a smart plan? Follow me on this. Because um, we're going to want to insert items via the crafter into this guy. Uh, and I'm thinking logistic sorting would be a cool approach to this. So basically we say, ah, what'd you do? Don't do that. Nobody said that you can remove those blocks. That's not cool. Today I learned, how much pressure did we lose? Wow, we lost a lot of pressure there. Dude, I had this up to five bars. That is a feels bad. Oof. So, not cool. Nobody wants you to click on something. And no, bad pressure chamber walls. Oh, well, we'll just let that accumulate pressure again when, you know, it'll, it'll be fine. Uh, everything was stopped, by the way. Like this, we had up to four and a half bars. Everything was kind of nice and perfect. Now we've just completely lost all our air pressure. So that's 
that's terrible. But, eh, life goes on. I guess you're gonna do liquid ethylene now, so that's cool. Anyway, uh, what I'm saying is that we're gonna wanna insert items here into this chest and then have them inserted in here to craft, right? Uh, and then what I'm thinking is we might want uh, an interface over here. Would that be cool? So let's get that. Bada bing, bada boom, all the crafts. And then some cabling, because we're definitely gonna want lots of cabling happening here. We'll get like a stack of that stuff. Never hurts to have a little bit extra. And then we'll want this with this with that, right? So what it'll do is it'll pull it out and pull it and then you're cool, right? I think that looks good. So what I did do in advance is a little bit of uh, clearing out underground here. Actually, I probably don't even need you. We'll just go straight across to here. And now we just need to get you connected. Um, would now be a good time to do wireless refined storage stuff or should we just, because we have like, I think we've got some, I don't know where from, here is probably nearishest, nearishest. Let's go behind this wall and see what we got. Uh, getting there. Oh, there it is. <laughs> one more. If I had dug one more block, I would have found what I was looking for. Would you look at that? I mean, that just... Don't that just take the cake? That's exactly what you should come to expect from a dire video. One more block back and we would have been cool. So let's go underneath. I said underneath. Cool. Right through to here. And then we can run our cables like so. Okay. And our, our fellow flare lantern will take care of the whole light this area up thing, right? So that should be fine. Perfect. So now we got refined storage hooked up here. Beautiful. So now I should be able to request crafting. How are you, pressure chamber? Oof. Oof with the slow amount of bar pressure. Oof. That's feeling really bad. Come on, guys. Let's go. Uh, how much for compressed iron ingots in a new meta craft? So it needs two bars of pressure for this craft to succeed, right? So we need this guy to get up to two bars of pressure. So we'll test his crafting in a minute, right? He's at one-ish, right? He's getting there. We'll get we'll get ramped up at some point. Um, boy, you really are just taking forever. One bar of pressure over there, okay. Yeah, we'll be good. I was just making sure that we weren't gonna have a problem and I think we're fine. Okay. So what we're going to want next is the thermal pneumatic processing plant. And I think uh, I've taught you pretty much how to make all the prerequisites for this so that I can do that. Boy, do I love being able to do that. Hooray, advancement. Try saying that three times fast. Thermal pneumatic processing plant, thermal pneumatic processing plant, thermal pneumatic processing plant. Boom. So this guy uses not only pressure, but also heat. So there's two important components to this, right? We need pressure, this guy. And again, he can only get up to five, so let's be careful. But he also needs heat. Heat's a big deal. Um, and ooh, what's this button? Move fluid. Okay, cool. So there's a lot of recipes for this. Um, uh, so no valid ingredients. Yeah, poorly insulated. Four of the six block faces are exposed to air, which wastes heat. Ensure no neighboring blocks are air blocks to insulate the machine for better performance. Haha. -ha. So we want this guy to be insulated. Luckily, there's a way to do that with thermal lagging, I believe, right? So I should be able to make like 10 of these. And they're pretty easy to make. You get six at a time from wool and glass. And I believe placing it on the sides should help. Now you can access the block through the thermal lagging, I thought, but maybe you're, oh, okay. 
Not with a sword, huh? That's a little annoying. Problems, no valid ingredients. See, our, our heat problems went away. That's cool. How about with you? With you, with you, okay, that's interesting. So certain items in our hand we can access it with, but with the flux bore and the sword, for some reason, no. But that's okay, not a big deal. Not a big deal, we'll manage with that. But you want to thermally insulate this if you can, because it's gonna help. Uh, now, there's there's some changes that we're going to be making in a minute here to make this a little bit different, but you'll see. Now, how do we generate heat? That's a question. Uh, the main way that I know to do it is with a vortex tube. I think um, heat can be applied by pacing a block that generates heat next to this machine. Think of a vortex tube, fast but requires power, but also lava, fast but solidifies, and torches, very slow. To cool down a machine, remove the heat sources and or speed up the process by placing down heat sinks or cold blocks such as ice, packed ice, and blue ice. So you can put lava next to this to heat it up, but the problem with lava is it's going to solidify. So for example, I'm going to go break the block underneath, and if we now look at um, you, you're going to tell me that we have a problem. One of the six block faces is open to the air. I'm not shocked, okay? If we put some lava underneath this guy, he will um, start, you know, getting heat. And that's cool, I think, right? So, wow, yeah, look at that temperature climb. Whoo, that is some really fast temperature climb. And look at that. That is quick. Wowzers. Um, the problem with the temperature climb, though, is that eventually that lava will solidify. And that's bad times. We don't want, we don't want solidification of lava. Um, so we're going to have to deal with that. Uh, now, if we were to remove that lava, I mean, I like how fast that is. I really do. I'm just curious, like, so right now, his temperature is dropping fast. But if I cover that up, see, look, the temperature is not moving. Aha, aha. So if you thermally insulate, you actually do really well in terms of temperature control. That's good to know, right? So if there's a side open to air, he's gonna lose temperature really fast, right? Which I'm okay with right now, because you know how fast it was to get that up there. I'm not, I'm not sweating that. <clears throat> so he's gonna come down to room temperature really fast. The other way to do this that's more sustainable, or in other words, just won't disappear uh, or turn into obsidian in a few minutes is a vortex tube. Now this guy's cool. Basically you pump air pressure in and he will have and, and develop a hot side and a cold side. Um, so we want the hot side, and that's going to be your red side there, to face uh, the, 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 the thing you want to heat up. And then the cold side is going to face air, uh, and, and all the cold will go out that way. Um, however, in order for that to happen, I think it's about time we make a wrench. So let's make an air compressor real fast. Uh, or is it called a charging station from Pneumaticraft? There we are, charging station, yes. Cool. So you can make that for me, and that seems like a good time. Where am I gonna wanna put you, charging station? That's a super good question. How about we put you back here-ish somewhere? Somewhere reasonably respectable, at least for now. Cool, now here's the deal. The charging station will only have as much pressure as the entire system has. So you're never gonna have more air in the charging station than anywhere else. Everything balances pressure, remember? Uh, now, if we wanna make a wrench from Pneumaticraft, which we do, orange dye, please, really, dandelions? Come on, chief, I gotta do something about dye. Cool, so that would be you. And then we also need an air canister to go along with the orange dye to make us a wrench. Cool. So the pneumatic wrench needs air pressure, and the charging station is how you get air pressure into it. So if we look here, we'll see it's starting to fill up with, with bars, and you can see it's a little bit slow initially, but it'll speed up if we get some speed upgrades going on, which I'll talk to you guys about in a bit. So that's, you know, going to be able to charge and discharge items faster. We don't need this thing to be full. It'll be nice if it's full, uh, but we, I mean, also, it's, it doesn't need to get that full, right? It'll be fine. So, uh, just note that this thing can only reach the pressure and equalize with the amount of pressure inside the charging station. So he's not going to be able to go above 1.9 bars. See? He's not going any further. He's done. Now, once the internal pressure here hits 2, he'll be able to hit 2, but that's it. So just keep that in mind with your charging station. It's not what you're normally used to when you're charging items, right? It all equalizes. Everything equalizes. It's an important note. Okay, are you guys still, yeah, you're cool. You could probably use a little bit more coal though. 
and you guys are pretty good on liquid ethylene, so you'll last for a little bit, right? So these guys are hitting the two bar thing, but this guy's still at 1.6. So we're getting there slowly but surely. I'm super annoyed that breaking that block happened. That's super annoying. But now that we have a wrench, boop. I always like to have my wrench in my number four slot, muscle memory and all that. What I'm thinking is we will have this guy set up here and then we can rotate him, right? And the wrench should be able to rotate him pretty well. So we want to rotate him such that the red side is up, right? And now we can check this and there are no sides that are unconnected. That's cool. And then the downside is where cold air will go. Cool. Um, and I'd like to get some pressure over here. So what I'm going to do is clear out underground here a little bit. That seems fair. Okay. Ah, that probably I didn't want to break. That's okay. We'll fix it real quick. Shrink probably would be my best bet. Zoop. I do love me some shrink. Nice. All right, cool. So that fixes that derp. And then what we're going to want is to access Dagnabbit. Did not mean to do that. How much pressure do we lose there? Good, not too much. Not too much. There's a lot of air inside that thing. So if you break a tube, it's not bad. If you break the multi-block, it loses a lot of air really fast. So not the end of the world. Okay. Um, so what we probably want to do debating how this should actually be run because that will get exposed into that room a little bit I'd like it to be a little less so what we'll do is we'll connect it here can I have more tubes by the way Thank you. Okay, so we'll run it like here. So we'll just go boop and then over and then down. And I think that would make the most sense. That sound fair? I think that sounds good. Okay, so let's unshrink ourselves. Oh boy, these guys again. Hello, friends. Whew. That, I, it's kind of fun when they show up. It really is. It really is. Because it's not like Vanilla Raid where it's like, oh, they're up on the... Like, he popped up down here in my basement right next to me. That is really kind of cool. I mean, that is neat. All right. So that'll be connected. I just don't want to, you know, connect to it now because I don't want to start losing air pressure. Um, so let's see, what would be the best way to connect this guy? So you, you kind of want him immediately connected there, but I wonder if a heat pipe would be a good idea. I wonder if a heat pipe would be a good idea. So heat pipes are expensive. They need three blocks of compressed iron, which I also taught my system how to make. An insulated core of compressed iron which can transfer heat without losing any to adjacent air or fluid blocks. A more compact alternative to compressed iron blocks. This block can be camouflaged with the camouflage applicator tool. So I think what this means is I can do something like this and then this and that will say that he has no problems. These guys are thermally insulated, so they won't lose heat to the adjacent blocks. Because you notice in the crafting recipe, they have thermal lagging on them. So that's cool. Uh, and then this guy can still output his heat there. Does that seem like a cool idea? I hope so, because that's what we're going to get. So now what I'd like to do is connect this guy up like so. Okay. And what that'll do is allow me to get air pressure into our vortex tube. He'll start generating heat and cold. And then we come over to here, I just have to connect him, boop, and that starts pressurizing this tube nice and quickly as the air pressure balances. And then this guy starts receiving pressure, 
So the bottom temperature is very cold, the top temperature is very hot. See it on the tooltip there? And then if we start checking this dude out, you'll see his temperature starts to climb. Now this is obviously much slower than just throwing a block of lava underneath the thing, but also it's not gonna turn to obsidian in a few minutes, needing me to replace it all the time. So up to you to decide which one you wanna do. I kinda like this. And as the air pressure increases, by the way, the temperature differential is gonna improve a lot too. Now, one problem we have is that the bottom block here is very cold and it's gonna slow down the production of heat because it's too cold on the bottom. So we need to dissipate that a little bit. So let's get a heat sink if we can. I'm gonna request one of them and throw that on the bottom. And what that should do, so see how the bottom's turning blue and the top's turning red? It's because it's getting hot, nice. Now, if I throw a heat sink on here, let's see what happens. So bottom temperature, you know, 135, 136, top temperature 245, 249. That should help to increase the top temperature. So see how the bottom temperature, not so cold anymore? This guy, the heat sink, is dissipating the cold because a heat sink will rapidly dissipate either heat or cold for you. So with that being there, the top temperature should, I think, if I understand how this works a little bit, uh, be able to, to split the heat a little bit better. Should we look at basic concepts for heat? Um, heat disperses from hotter objects to colder objects. Blocks will only spread heat to adjacent blocks that support the concept of heat. The bigger the temperature difference, the faster the heat dispersal. Different objects have a different thermal resistance. Yada, yada, yada. Insulation, heat sources. Cool. Maybe if we looked at, uh, let's see here, machines. Do we have vortex tube? Yes. Uh, it splits the air flowing into hot and cold parts, heating up one side and cooling down the opposite. Be aware that the hot and cold sides do have a thermal connection, so it's more efficient to vent the cold side when you want to utilize the heat and vice versa. If you want to use the cold, <clears throat> this can be done with a heat sink. When you place down or rotate a vortex tube, the hot end will face toward you. Note that each end has a narrow red or blue band indicating which is which. Pressurized air is required to make the vortex tube work. Higher pressure leads to greater temperature differentials, but air will also be used at a greater rate. Cool. Cool. So this guy should be getting nice and hot, which means this guy should be getting nice and hot. Look at that. 548. Beautiful. That is cool. So he's getting nice and hot. Uh, the, the, the heat sink is doing his job, and I would call that a successful heat situation. Nice. Now, the back here also needs to be connected to, um, and I'm going to come in a little bit on the back. See, oh, look, I'm trying really hard to make this look fancy. Okay, but the back also needs some pressure, right? So now if I break that, are we losing heat? A little bit, yes. But if I connect this, are we no longer losing heat? I hope. Correct, good, no problems. <clears throat> so now we can connect you, my good sir. Whoops. There you go. Be quick if you are dope like me and do that. <laughs> you really gotta be careful about which side you connect to, otherwise you start losing air. Now how's my air pressure over here? 2.3 bars, that's good. Remember, this big pressure chamber is basically like a battery, by the way, for air. Um, so it's a large amount of air, because there's two metrics here, right? There's air volume, like how much air is actually being stored in the thing, and the amount of pressure. So because this is a big pressure chamber, we're storing a lot of air in here, which is cool, right? Um, you know, these guys, you know, they're doing their thing, making air, and it's kind of balancing throughout the system. So when we lose a little bit like that, it's not a big deal, but you are wasting some, but it's not a huge problem because we've got so much inside here. It's just that it takes a really long time to fill this up because it's a five by five. If you made a three by three, it would fill up to five bars of pressure a lot quicker. So there's a lot of fluids from Pneumatocraft, and I wanna real quick cover them because I want you guys to understand your options, right? Um, you can use biodiesel to make things, or you can use crude oil, which you've probably seen scattered throughout world gen, right? There's, there's oil wells, right? Crude oil gets used up. Biodiesel is made from plants. Um, crude oil can be turned using the refinery into diesel, kerosene, gasoline, and LPG. Long story short, uh, a lot of these can be used as fuel sources if you want. We don't really need that. Uh, gas, diesel can be used to make lubricant, which is one of the things we want, and LPG can be used to make plastic, which is one of the things we want. However, both of these can also be made with straight up biodiesel without having to worry about the excess stuff. 
cool, cool. So we're probably going to want to go that route. And that's what I'm going to do. Because I think I've done crude oil in the past on like Forgecraft and a couple other places. So I want to try the biodiesel route and see how it works. So in order for this to work, there's several things we're going to need to do and automate. Which, as usual, sounds a lot of fun to me. So what we're going to do to make biodiesel. We need plant oil and, and, and ethanol. Or vegetable oil. Well, vegetable oil from Pneumatocraft, plant oil from Immersive. We're going to do everything Pneumatocraft, right? So in order to get biodiesel, we need vegetable oil which is just seeds and a thermonic processing. Oh, that's easy, right? So we need another one of these. So we're gonna need one more of these. Uh, and then we also need ethanol, which also needs a thermonic. So we need two of them, okay? Uh, and that needs yeast culture and some kind of plant. To me, apples and sugar look to be the best. You can do watermelon, but you get a little less. Uh, you can also do sweet berries from Minecraft, that's a little less. Poisonous potatoes are good, but regular potatoes are meh. They're better than watermelon i guess so your best bet is sugar or apples we'll probably go sugar because sugar cane's a little bit easier i think i'm already automating sugar cane upstairs anyway so that's the route i'm going to go to get ethanol however for that we need yeast culture and yeast culture is interesting we can either make it probably this is the way you make it first in the thermomatic processing plant you need um some some mushrooms and some water and you'll get 250 millibuckets of yeast culture. So if you want to set up a mushroom farm to automate this, you can. However, there's an in-world yeast production that looks interesting. You basically drop sugar into a pool of yeast culture and then put a water source block next to it, and that water source block will consume one of the pieces of sugar that you dropped into the yeast culture and then turn that water source block into another yeast culture block. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Now here's the thing. Note that the crafting check is done when the water is placed, not when the sugar is dropped. That's going to make it a little tricky to automate, I think. You can drop a stack of sugar into the yeast culture, but only one sugar will be used at a time, which is good, at least. So that might be what we want to do. Or I might set up a mushroom farm to automate it the other way. We'll see. But we definitely have to get the first couple from this. So we need like three more thermo guys that I can't say three times fast anymore. I said it as many times as I can. I'm done, right? Uh, thermo doohickeys. Oh, I'm missing bars? Killing me, Smalls. Thermo doohickey. Alright, so let me get this crafted and we'll be right back. So I'm hearing noises as I craft over here. I just want to show you that this is working. So if we look up compressed iron ingot, let's say we want to stack and hit start. It should. It's nice. So you can see the, the doors open. And they're doing the thing. Nice. Beautiful. And then it winds up sitting in here, waiting to be the door opens, and then pops it in there, and then it gets imported in. Pretty cool, right? It's awesome. I love it. I love watching the little doors open. It's my favorite part. The little doors are the coolest to me. I don't know. I'm a dork. What do you want from me? We also need the fluid mixer, by the way, which needs a turbine blade which needs gold and two redstone, which I'm really quick gonna add to this crafting dude, which yeah, I could have done through the interface dude, but whatever. Uh, so now if I came down here and said, hey, make the components for that, hopefully we see gold and redstone popping in here. And this is why I did the chest, because the pressure chamber interface only has one buffer slot. So having a chest here means that the gold and redstone can kind of be ready to go, right? And that's kind of cool. Nice. And the two redstone will be allowed to go in as soon as the door opens again. So see how the gold isn't being pulled out? Boom. Only the turbine blade is pulled out because we said crafted only items. Perfect. So let's take a look, right? So first off, I know we're going to need the three thermopneumatic processing plants. And that's going to be you you and you how's that sound right and we're probably going to need more of these covers and we're going to need to can i'm, I'm trying i'm going to try and use the heat pipes to heat all of them all at the same time from the same vortex and i'm hoping that that's doable i don't really know to be honest with you but we'll find out right bottom temperature 26 c not bad that heat sink's doing a really good job um so what we want to do right uh this one we should probably should probably determine what these guys are going to be but i'm going to say that this guy can be ethanol. So he needs yeast culture to go in, and he also needs sugar. So let's get some sugar. I think we should have more sugar up here. 
because I made this sugar cane from kelp, right? I did that an episode or two back. I don't forget if I did it on camera or not, right? So you're gonna be sugar, right? You're gonna go in there and you're gonna need yeast culture. Um, you are gonna be the seeds for the plant vegetable oil, right? So it looks like 50 millibuckets from seeds, 20 millibuckets from crops that have been produced. So if we just got some wheat seeds and pop them in there, that would be getting me the plant oil. And you can see it's telling me we don't have enough pressure. See how it goes and changes the bar thing there? That's telling me we need two bars of pressure for this to work. Uh, this guy doesn't have any information yet because I haven't put the, the stuff in. Do you need a fluid for you? I'm thinking no, right? Yeah, no fluid at all. And then finally, we need some mushrooms. Uh, we need about four of them, right, uh, to go in here with, I think, four buckets of water. Now, I've got a bucket of lava here that I'm just going to avoid real quick. Remember infinite lava? So calm down. It's fine. Uh, what do I have water-wise back here? Sweet. So if I popped water into this dude, he should make me my first dudes, right? So we need uh, 30 to 60 C and some semblance of pressure, I assume. I assume yeast culture. And he doesn't actually need any pressure, so that's kind of cool. Well, anyway, let's try out um, how does this work with heat pipes, right? I might need another heat pipe. So I feel like I'm short a little bit, but we'll get six at a time here. It might wind up needing some crafting to happen, but that's okay. Actually, we have just enough, so that's cool. But we also want some some thermal lagging, so we don't lose uh, temperature here, right? And that's just glass and wool, so I'm not worried about that. That doesn't look right, does it? I don't think you want to shift click it. Or maybe you do want to shift click it. Maybe I lied. Are you in that block space and you're not going to let thermal lagging happen? I want to say the answer is yes. I want to say the answer is yes. So thermal lagging actually is a block space thing. Okay, cool. Can I get the water out of here? I guess not. Not worried about it. So we do need that extra heat pipe. Right, because we need this all moved over one. Oh, yeah, okay, I see what happened. Should we move it over two? Eh, we'll move it over one, we'll be fine. All right, so you're gonna get the mushrooms, you're gonna, are you, uh, yeah, no, you're fine. You're gonna get seeds and you're gonna get, you're not the what I want, I want you. You're gonna get sugar uh, and you guys all need to be mixed, so we should be prepared for the fact that we need a mixer to happen to make the biodiesel. So I actually probably do wanna move them over a little bit more. Cool. Yeah, let's move them over significantly more actually. Okay, uh, and then, so you're gonna be mushrooms, you're gonna be seeds, you're gonna be sugar, okay? And then I'll probably have the fluid mixer here. And does that mean that you're three, six? Okay, cool. And you should be three of six and you should be four of six. Perfect, right? So then I can do this. And you probably don't need insulation. Yes. Um, do you need heat at all? I don't think so. So it shouldn't hurt to run the heat here, but that's fine. And then you guys should have no sidedness issues for temperature, right? Uh, and then heat pipes because we have the capability to do so I'm gonna do this and see what happens wow look at that look at that so just like pressure heat is gonna distribute evenly as well cool all right so his heat's getting there so does that mean you're gonna make the stuff now or do you need a little bit of pressure you might need like not zero pressure so then what we'll do is something like this. Okay, and I wanna get these guys placed down immediately so that they stop losing heat because they were probably losing heat, right? Uh, and then we can connect you up to the pressure dude. Cool. All right, so are you, are you good? Like, what's your problem? 
Too much heat. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, 30 to 60 C is what we're going to need. All right, that should be cooling off. Now, how about you, buddy? Why are you cooling off? Apply at least two bars of pressure. All right, you're getting there. And you add some valid ingredients. All right, we're waiting for the yeast culture. All right, so that's fine. I could do a heat sink here real quick. I'm thinking what I might want to do, because you don't want heat, let's do this, and then I can keep you hot, right? Uh, and that should be no longer losing heat, so that's good. And then we'll have one separate over here, because you don't need to be hot. You need to be between, you know, 30 to 60 C is what you need. So you know what you could do? A torch. Want a torch heat you up a little bit? Maybe. Maybe. Bueller. We'll find out. We'll find out. This is probably why we're going to want to do this. <laughs> this is probably why we're going to want... Oh, look, it is heating up. Nice. All right, so the temperature works there where the torch is pretty good. Hey, now he's happy. Now he's happy. No problems. He doesn't even need air pressure, so we don't even worry about that. But you guys are making vegetable oil. Nice, because the air pressure is building up. The bars are good. How's everybody over here doing, by the way? Nice. Everybody's having a good time. Back up to three bars. Can't believe that that thing broke. You have no idea how annoyed I am about that. Uh, so then you just need the yeast culture. So let's get the, the yeast culture going here, right? I know we're going to need ultimately four buckets. So let me get the other two that we need. Cool. Perfect. So that's going to get me 250 millibuckets of yeast culture per operation. And then we'll try the sugar thing. All right. So you should have my... Uh, what's going on here? Are you too hot? You're too hot, aren't you? Killing me, Smalls. So temperature should drop pretty good into the 60s. Nice. Yeah, I'm thinking keeping this at 60C is going to be a massive nuisance. So we are absolutely going to want to do this, the in-world crafting method, now that we've got our first bucket, that is. So my understanding of this uh, would be as such. I place you in the world. Okay. Now, do you not? Okay, you do flow. It'll just take, it's probably just a little slow, right? And if I put water here and then drop in the sugar, it's a no. Okay. However, if I drop in the sugar and then place the water, it's a yes, but it takes a second. Okay, got it, got it. So we're gonna need a way to automate that that's smart. So basically what we gotta do is look inside that block space for an item entity of sugar, or any item entity probably, because it's unlikely another item entity would, sugar, okay? Um, how do we do that? We did just add integrated dynamics, so I'm pretty sure integrated dynamics can handle that for us. Um, are there other item detectors? There is an item detector from Cyclic. Detects nearby items, I'll put it right. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Item detector. Well, there you go. I mean, that's a thing. Look at you. Compare. How to compare count to limit, limit zero. So if it's greater than zero, it's gonna emit a redstone signal. Uh, and we can see the range. So if we wanted it to be like that, that could be cool. So you'll emit a redstone signal when there's an item inside this range. I, we can't filter it on sugar, but that's okay. Yes. Yes, that's a yes, That that's cool. So what we could do, all right, we're gonna set this up next episode, but I think a fluid placer, uh, right? A fluid placer from Cyclic. Okay. 
Can you respond to a redstone pulse? Requires redstone always on, requires redstone always on. Boo! Uh, fluid place or from industrial four going. Can you respond to a redstone pulse? Do, 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 do. Fluid placer, cool. We're gonna need some more buckets. Boo, fluid placer, not respond to pulse. Bump, bump, boop, 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 boop. Can you respond to a redstone pulse? Run on pulse, beautiful. That's what I wanna see. All right, so check this out, right? Um, basically what we're gonna set up uh, you need some power. Boom. All right. And then we put this dude item detector here. Okay. We do this. Okay. You ready? Let's say we want you to place water here. Right, uh, I'll even I'll even do this. Right, so we want you to place water there. So I'm gonna say like that would be cool. Okay, so if you're here and you had a bucket of water in you, right, and you run on pulse, watch what happens when I drop the sugar. If this works, it'll be cool. You ready? Why? Oh, cause you need that? You need the pulse to be that long? Are you not overwriting the source block being there? Cause that's gonna be annoying. Let's pick you up for a sec. Oh, so that's interesting. The pulse needs to last long enough. All right, we're going to figure this out next episode, but you get the idea, right? Um, well, actually, no, that's... We can make this work. We can make this work. Hang on. Because if, as long as I don't pick it up, we're cool, right? You know, in theory, you should place. Come on, place. I just want you to work. I just want you to overwrite that source block. We'll figure it out. Double 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.